Oh, hey, you rascals. Let's, uh, let's uh, make this cool abstract artwork car advert thingy. Um, I whipped this together yesterday reasonably quickly just as a lighting exercise. I like to use easy workflows uh, because easy means fast, easy means that it's um, not much can go wrong. So let's, let's get going. So I'm using this from an S library. I did not model this, but it's a fantastic model. I love this um, alpha. So you actually see what the difference there is. So if you bring an instance, uh, an asset in, and you have instances deactivated here, then you will be able to uh, over here actually access each part of the of the model rather than having only one um, node there that controls everything and you won't be able to shade anything because this uh, as it at the moment is unshaded and I need to give materials to it um, if I wanted to change the steering of the wheels and stuff also need to be able to um, access the wheels separately so let's get going uh, so I know I wanted to have this top-down view um, straight from above so I'm just creating a ground plane, bringing the camera right above it, um, Alt G and Alt R to pretty much zero out the camera and then just uh, move it up on Z to just get it above. So this lighting here is not really representing anything that uh, defines the look in the end. I just needed something to just uh, get started. And um, I'll probably just fast forward through the the shading process here. So this is just a BSDF shader and I'm just gonna play with uh, the, the roughness and uh, activated clear coat, the whole metallicness of it comes later. So I just want to block in the, the, the look as fast as possible, which means uh, yellow ground and yellow car. So just fast forward, this is just uh, me using the glass shader here or a, a principal BSDF with um, transparency all the way on then a transparent shader here they are mixed together here but the factor is driven by the shadow rays so uh, I think what it does as soon the the render detects shadows like the object would cast a shadow uh, it deactivates shadow casting so that all glass elements don't actually cast a shadow on the interior so it stays all nice and bright in there all right let's keep going there's uh, just really really basic shaders i didn't want to spend much time on shading because just a little bit of detail work there again nothing has to be final swapping over to cycles to see what we're actually looking at here let's just quickly go back a second so this is not a bad start here right but i'm not liking what the reflections do here at the moment especially these hard cutoffs that's something i want to uh, want to avoid i'm i'm working towards reflections that sort of shape across the entire car something like this right so it's all smooth and uh supporting the shape of the car so i'm stretching out the light in order to um, get more of it on the bonnet, not just the, the windows. I'm duplicating it. The, what I'm trying to do with the duplicate is just get more of the light reflection towards the, the top of the, the front of the car. And that doesn't quite work. So now I'm narrowing things down and uh, try something, something completely new now. So I'm using this light horizontally, bring it down to create this really beautiful curved reflection in the front here that uh, I, I just dig. So adjusting the intensity a bit and bringing it to the back. The Oh, by the way, so I play with the height here, right? But the pivot is uh, my 3D cursor here so that I can just rotate it in this angle from here to here. I don't have to worry about moving it around. So now I'm just uh, adjusting the top light. Again, I want to I wanna get a bit more punch in here. But what happened now is um, is that the back of the car here gets significantly brighter than the front. And that is because over here we see that the shape of the car goes up and then just gently tapers down. So these areas here are closer to the light than the bonnet is. And that means we get more brightness in the diffuse channel. Lining up the, the angle of the light a little bit better with the angle of the of the car the way it just goes from low to high gives me just a, a more balanced um, I copied the light from the front to the top here so we have a light here now and that light creates uh, these really cool highlights that then go into the 
air intake, but also we have the, the curve around here. So it's just a really nice support for especially like cars that have a lot of round shapes. So I did not like how, how solid this, this reflection here is. Uh, oopsie daisy. This is just all a bit too boring. I, I, I like what it does in the end, but it's a bit boring. And I also still see that it has a hard cut off here. So let's just see what we can, what we can do with, with this help a bit. So what I'm doing in the end, I'm creating a, a, a ring, uh, a circle curve, give it thickness and assign a emission shader to it. I'll then say that uh, this uh, object is um, not visible for the camera. So the, here's the camera, here is the ring and the cars uh, down there. So we want to avoid that obstruction. So the reflections flow very nicely over the entire car and that is just so much more elegant than having stuff just chopping in and out here and there. Uh, but it also increased the exposure on the front and the end of the car a bit. So we need to uh, balance that a bit by playing around with the, the size of the circle a bit and uh, its placement. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm stretching it on left and right to just reduce the exposure on the edges. And that works nicely. Um, however, the top of the car is now a little bit too underexposed. So everything here just gets a bit too dark, especially in comparison to the front that is still in the back. They're still very hot. The, the, the yellow tones are practically uh, maxed out. So um, I feel like I uh, have to dial this back a little bit and just focus only on the reflections right now. So one thing I'm playing around with right now are the ray visibility settings just to see how the light affects the overall look. And that will come in handy in a second because I will bring in the top light, which is deactivated at the moment. There it is. That's now we're having double reflections. We definitely don't want that. But what is happening that the top light that we have here, this one here, right there, that is balancing out um, the unexposed post area that we had here right now. So, so in order to make things a bit more interesting, I'm going to play a bit with that uh, emission loop now. So scaling it down and duplicating it. So we get this like race stripe look. And I think I like it, but not quite that sharp, that harsh. It's still very flat. So I undo that. And then I go into the um, uh, shader editor for that, for that emission loop and bring in layer weight note put the Fresnel into the color and it will what we have here is actually really, really nice. It's a bit unexposed right now. Uh, we get to that in a second, but, but what we have here is, I hope you can see that we have this faint Fresnel outline that the look is, is fantastic. I totally, I totally dig it. Also, uh, quickly jumping back on this before we miss it. So I activated the, the overhead light again, right? this one right above the car there. And I go in the settings for this light and I'm playing now with the ray visibility settings down here because I want to get rid of the double of the double reflections, especially in the, in the, in the, in the glass elements. So by deactivating, oh, that was a bit faster. Ah, here we go. By deactivating uh, transmission and potentially glossy as well. I can't remember right now, so both are off. I only see the reflections from the, the emission loop while that light, that overhead light is only helping with the exposure of, of the diffuse element. Of so by doing that, I get the reflections from the emission loop and the nice flow, you know, that those nice flowy reflections across the entire car, but I also get the exposure correction, the, the brightness increase from the overhead light without affecting the reflections, if that makes sense. And that's practically, that's practically the look. So now I'm just mucking around a little bit with uh, last tweaks. So I'm going to skim over that. So the engine block was just a bit too chromey. So I gave it uh, some, some more like dark metal. So in the same with the interior, there is just, uh, it was just all too dark. So I'm bringing in yellow leather uh, to match the exterior paint job and then just a few little detailing jobs here. Nothing that really changes the overall uh, look anymore. It's just nibbles. So, and there we are. 
this is this is uh this is it i hope you found this helpful i hope there was uh, a few cool tricks and the simplicity in this and um well see you next time